Hi and welcome back to a new video again today a viewer mail video even though I didn't receive it via mail because I actually met him in person he was also from Berlin he contacted me over Instagram at the weekend because he seems to be having some issues with his Aros RTX 2080 Extreme Water Force this is an AIO version and he sent me some pictures over Instagram that were a bit worrying and to be honest when he asked me how he could fix this or how he should react, I thought I'm not quite sure if he should do that himself, if he doesn't have all the tools and maybe equipment to reseal the AIO again. So I decided to quickly invite him to Grizzly because it's just it was a few minutes uh, drive for him. Then we met up, I received the card, I gave him an RTX 3080 instead, so it's a, a small upgrade for him. Also a new PSU because he figured out that he doesn't have enough PCI Express connectors. But yeah, should be fine for him and in return we have a nice card which we can look at for this video. But yeah, let's just start in and see what this card brings to the table. Hetzner is a leading hosting provider and data center operator in Europe, with hundreds of thousands of servers in operation. By combining its strengths in innovative technology, attractive prices, expert support and flexible customer service, Hetzner expanded its markets both within and outside Europe. They operate their very own high-tech data centers in Germany and Finland. Hetzner also offers high-performance cloud servers for an amazing price. Price. And not only this, Hetzner is now already covering both the east and west coast of the United States with their latest location in Hillsboro, Oregon. Now you can deploy cloud servers in five different locations and benefit from features like load balancers, block storage and more. Find out more in the link below. I also quickly want to highlight how Makita is sleeping there. Like, I don't get it. Maybe she's just tired of what I'm talking about and tries to kill herself. I don't know. It's, it looks really uncomfortable, but she seems to have a good time and sleep. She changed position and I think this is probably much better. When I had a quick chat with him, I also asked him some questions, how it was installed and so on. And he also pointed out that the radiator was always on top of the case, so the pump wouldn't like draw any kind of like air or anything. So that's fine. Also, he noticed this because he had some weird green stuff suddenly on his mainboard, which he cleaned off, but he didn't open or clean the card itself. He also did not use the Gigabyte fans because he said they were too loud and he was using some Noctua fans instead. The first inspection from the front side, he pointed out that he had some weird green stuff somewhere here on the PCI Express slot. You can somehow spot a bit of a residue, but not much. Looking inside the window here, you might be able to spot some greenish stuff like on the bottom of the copper heatsink. And that could be a good indicator for corrosion on copper. Also on the back side, I cannot spot anything unusual also on the PC Express slot. So we'll just open it up. I just tried to remove this entire cover by unplugging these connectors because this is just for some light. But then I noticed it's like stuck underneath here, but this looks not good. This, I don't think this is supposed to be this way. I think from this angle it should be easier to see, but it, it looks like this cable is stuck underneath this part of the heatsink and like stuck between an inductor and a thermal pad. Very strange. I think they did some mistakes here during assembly. But before we remove the entire heatsink and everything, yeah, I mean, this does not look promising. There is some heavy corrosion going on, or at least it must be leaking. It appears quite greenish, which first look could appear like copper oxide. It's also kind of greenish looking, but honestly, it looks a bit too green. Could also be that the fluid inside is one of these like greenish looking coolants. And I think that's probably the case. Maybe it's a mix of both like a green coolant and also a bit of like copper corrosion, but definitely something is not good here. And this cable was indeed stuck between the heatsink and the thermal pad and the inductor, which I mean, it's definitely not good, but it's also quite funny or nice to see that even with this the card was still at least somewhat running fine for almost four years. The most important part though is that Makita finally found a nice and relaxing position to sleep. 
The card itself looks quite good though. I cannot spot anything unusual, no damages, no parts, like no pieces left of corrosion or anything. When he pointed out that he had something like on the PCI Express slot, I was a bit worried, but looks all right. I did not want to test the card knowing that there is something wrong because then something could always fail, right? That's why I thought we just disassemble it first. Maybe we can repair it, we can clean it and then test it later and see if everything will be fine. Looking at the cooler though, you can see there is already some uh, weird stuff. I think it's on a position of a screw head. Probably just went yeah, I mean, look, look at this. It just went through from this direction, probably through the screw. That is some weird shit right here. What will make our repair attempt very annoying and yeah, I don't know, it's like, look at these screws. We have this triangle screw head and then this like never open me again screw head because this can only apply torque in the direction for like tightening the screw, but you cannot open this again. Very annoying and I can kind of understand why you would do this during the warranty time frame because then you just want to avoid that people are opening this but like this is an like not old product but it's getting out of warranty time and then you might want to repair it yourself and you can't. With a tiny flat hat can somehow I think open these. I think I will first try to open this. I hope with this screw right here we can maybe open up the loop and drain it first before we have like a huge mess on the table. Maybe this is not meant for draining. I'm not sure. At least I can rotate this forever and nothing happens. Okay, great. What is, what's even this? Oh. Did I really just spend about 10 minutes removing these screws just to like remove the first part, this, this cold plate. I did not even open the pump. Honestly, these type of screws, they should, be, they should be banned. This should not be allowed. Essentially, we removed this cold plate, which is responsible to spread heat, dissipate heat from memories and also VRM. Honestly, I'm surprised that this is not one part. I thought this would just be one piece, but as you can see, it was connected over just ordinary thermal paste and not even too much with the pump housing. Also, if we inspect this area closer, there is still some of the green stuff left. And also if we pay more attention to the copper, the copper seems not to be corroded. Like the copper is not affected. So honestly, I just think that this is some, some residue of some leaked green fluid. That just seems to be the pump. We have some electronics for it, also some arrows for filling, also for the flow direction. Unfortunately, as I said before, we were not able to open this. So yeah, would have been nice if they would have purposed this also for refilling and instead of just using it for the first filling process. Because the triangle bit doesn't fit, it's too large. I will just make my own one. Honestly, I mean, it's not great, but it's better. That single screw, the one that's remaining, uh, yeah, the, the screw head is completely ruined and I just cannot open the screw. And now I think we will just try to rotate the cold plate and see if we can loosen the screw or if, I don't know.
First look at the pump housing, we still have some like green fluid left in there, but just from the first inspection also checking the plastic on the bottom right here, the surface quality of the plastic. I don't think that the reason for the leak for all this green stuff right here can be found on the pump. I don't think this is part of the problem. Not so sure about the cold plate though. This is the area where we found all the green stuff and especially here looks a bit odd. The other directions actually look fine, but yeah. These parts are quite odd. At least whenever we rotate this in the center area where we had the, the gasket or like the O-ring, there's always this weird like black stuff in the center. It also has some texture to it, so it's a bit rough. These are the counterparts, like the gasket, it's not really an o-ring because it's like a formed, a formed gasket, like a formed o-ring, but the center parts here, they are always very rough. It feels like an, like an etched surface. So I'm not sure if there is like a material conflict between the fluid and the gasket, that could be a reason, but I'm pretty sure it's related to these center parts right here. I just did some research if somebody else had this problem, if maybe a video already exists about this topic. I could not find a video itself, but I could find a post on Reddit and the user there experienced exactly the same issue as what we found here. It looks exactly the same. He had the same kind of defect, I would call it, on the gasket. And his solution was to kind of clean the gasket and rub it with some, I don't know, some sealant or something and just mount it again. But honestly, looking at the surface, like the texture of this gasket, it feels very rough, like, as I said before, like an etched surface. So yeah, I don't feel comfortable just mounting this again. I think you would just experience the same kind of issue, probably again, because it doesn't look like it's gonna seal perfectly again, which is not that cool because it's not an ordinary O-ring and because the pump housing does not have a groove where you could put a normal o-ring in like you would have in a custom water block it would make replacement of this gasket extremely difficult and honestly speaking with these types of screws like i'm not gonna put these screws back in they're so annoying and one is like completely ruined the screw head of one of these I also figured out that Fantex just offers a custom water block and I'm just going to order this one and I'm gonna put a custom water block on the cart and then it should be fine and good to use. I also want to point out that the cold plate looks absolutely clean. Also the pump housing in between, like inside, all looks good. The fluid itself seems not to be the problem. I think it's more some material incompatibility issue with the gasket. But all of this is totally clean, like no residues. And this was used for about four years. And he said that he's playing games with this like every single day. So it's heavily in use and even then looks perfectly clean. So the fluid itself looks, looks nice, looks like a good choice. Just, yeah, I mean, this is like sealed. I'm not sure how they made this, but this product is definitely not made for any kind of maintenance or repair because just start off with the screws, then you cannot open this, you cannot clean it if there would be an issue. And like, I think overall, if you would have a cart like this and send it to RMA, they would probably just rip off the cooler, replace it with another one and throw this out. Like, not quite sure if that's a, a good solution, but that's probably what they would have done. Obviously, it's a four year old cart. And I also remember that I tested a similar cart, similar product, I think it was out of the 30th gen and it had different screws, if I remember correctly. So I'm not quite sure if it would make sense that I would bash Gigabyte for this because it's an older product and they maybe already learned internally from this. I'm quite sure they are aware of this issue, but if you have a card like this, it might make sense to check if you have exactly the same because under the Reddit post, I also found replies stating that they had the same issues with these cards. So much about this card for today. Thanks for tuning in. Till next time, bye-bye.